The Starship that Musk is taking to Mars is powered by the insane Raptor engines developed by SpaceX. I'm curious what makes them so good and why they're referred to as the king of rocket engines. This is a behind-the-scenes look at the insane engineering behind SpaceX's Raptor engine. Hello, my name is Alex and welcome to yet another amazing video from Disruptive Age. Please remember to like, share, and leave a comment after watching. Now, let's get into the video for today. The Starship would be nothing if it didn't have its Raptor engines, which generate the thrust that allows it to escape the gravitational pull of the planet and travel to other planets on its interplanetary journeys. Because the Starship is designed to lift heavy payloads of up to 100 tons, the thrust generated by these engines must be enormous. Achieving this goal is critical to Musk's plan to establish permanent human settlements on Mars, as the Starship will be responsible for transporting all of the materials required for life on Mars. When it comes to powerful rockets, SpaceX does not lack options. The Falcon 9, which is partially reusable and capable of blasting payloads up to 22,800 kilograms into low Earth orbit, is one of the company's most impressive offerings. The Merlin engine, which was developed entirely in-house by SpaceX, powers the Falcon 9. However, the Starship required a more powerful engine, and SpaceX decided to develop a new engine, which they named the Raptor. SpaceX is introducing a slew of insane concepts into the design that has only a few other rocket companies dared to try. As a result, a monstrous beast masquerading as a rocket engine has been created. Each Raptor engine weighs approximately 1.5 tons and will provide the Starship with 11 million horsepower, which is the equivalent of four Hoover dams. By comparison, the Bugatti Veyron, one of the most powerful sports cars ever built, has an engine that weighs one-third the weight of the Raptor engines and is only capable of producing 1,200 horses. Moreover, if that is not insane enough for you, the fuel in the combustion chamber burns at temperatures that are high enough to melt the walls of the combustion chamber, as opposed to conventional engines. Why the wall does not melt is due to the clever way in which the flame is kept away from the walls, which involves manipulating the flow of the gas. Additionally, super cold fuel is pumped through the walls as an additional layer of security. The Raptor engine operates in the same way as most rockets, expelling gases quickly enough to propel the spacecraft forward. The Raptor, on the other hand, is a powerful rocket, thanks to a lot of clever engineering. SpaceX chose a full-flow staged combustion cycle for the engines, which differs from the standard design for rocket engines. There is no requirement for a dedicated consumable igniter fluid, as there is in the Merlin because engine ignition is handled by two redundant spark plug lit torch igniters on the inside. To power, the Raptor, methane, and oxygen are combined and deeply cooled to near their freezing points before being used as propellant. At such low temperatures, the propellant becomes denser, which improves the overall performance of the engine by increasing its overall density. Methane is a superior fuel because it has higher performance and is less expensive than kerosene or hydrogen-based propellants, which are both alternatives. Because it requires less effort to keep it cool at cryogenic temperatures, it is far more convenient to store than hydrogen. In addition, because it weighs less than hydrogen, it allows for more methane to be stored in a given tank. Methane is preferable to kerosene because the latter produces a residue during combustion known as coking, which reduces the reusability of the rocket. Because of its higher efficiency, the Raptor engine can produce significantly more pressure and thrust than the Merlin engine, despite having a nearly identical size. In the current state of the art, there is no other rocket engine capable of producing such a large amount of energy while using liquid methane and oxygen as propellants. The development of the Raptor engine is particularly impressive when you consider that the company's CEO, Elon Musk, did not study rocket science in school and instead taught himself everything by reading and listening to experts. The choice of fuel for the engine is yet another example of the forward thinking of the SpaceX design team. The Starship is on its way to Mars, and guess which gas is abundant in the planet's atmosphere? Methane. As a result, the plan is to mine the methane found on the planet to refuel a Starship before embarking on the return journey. This will simplify a lot of things, and it will even make the trip significantly less expensive. 
it will be similar to your plane landing at a foreign airport and refueling in preparation for another takeoff flight. According to this method, both the oxygen and the methane will be completely mixed in the gas phase before entering the combustion chamber, which is referred to as a full-flow staged combustion cycle. Because every drop of fuel is utilized efficiently in this manner, the full-flow design makes a great deal of sense for a variety of reasons. The absence of the need for a seal between the fuel and the oxidizer, which is a common source of failure in traditional rockets, is an example of this. The use of a full-flow design also eliminates the need for the pumping system to handle extreme pressure, which is another potential source of catastrophic failure in the system. In addition, SpaceX can increase the pressure in the combustion chamber to achieve greater performance. The Raptor has achieved 330 bar of pressure without exploding during testing, setting a new record for an operational engine designed to be used to launch orbital payloads into orbit. Before this, the Russian RD-180 held the record for the most pressure it could withstand at one time, at 31 bars. All of these factors contribute to the Raptor Engine's high reusability. They are capable of supporting 1,000 flights, which is a significant accomplishment in space travel. When compared to other companies' rockets, the Raptor engine is light years ahead of the competition, crushing them in terms of efficiency and reliability. SpaceX began 3D printing engine components, including turbopumps and injectors, to accelerate the development and testing process. This allowed them to advance the development and testing at a rapid pace. The Raptor engine is available in two configurations, sea level and orbital. The sea level variant will power the lower stage of the Starship and has been optimized for use on Earth. One of the other options is to use a vacuum pump to keep the upper stage moving even after it has been disconnected from the booster. The vacuum version has a nozzle skirt extension, which increases the size of the nozzle to improve performance in space. When the two items are placed next to each other, the difference is immediately apparent. Other than that, the two variants are identical in terms of specifications and components. High-performance Raptors do not come at a low price. In the beginning, each engine cost a million dollars to build, but SpaceX is working on reducing that cost to just $250,000 per engine. Musk considers the cost to be significant because he is attempting to make interplanetary travel affordable for everyone. This is why the Raptor engine is designed to require as little maintenance as possible to be used multiple times. His company is working hard to increase production and be able to produce rocket engines in large quantities. The immediate goal is to produce 500 of them per year in the short term. However, if Musk's goal of having a fleet of a thousand starships capable of performing thousands of flights is to be realized, that capacity will need to be significantly increased. Up to 41 Raptor engines can be used by a single starship, with the lower stage requiring as many as 31 sea level variants. It is anticipated that the upper stage will hold six Raptors, with a mix of sea level and vacuum variants, even though the exact number has varied throughout the starship's testing. The immediate goal is to produce 500 of them per year in the short term. However, if Musk's goal of having a fleet of a thousand starships, capable of performing thousands of flights is to be realized, that capacity will need to be significantly increased. Landing on the surface of the Earth and Mars will necessitate the use of sea-level engines. While SpaceX races to finish the Raptor engines, a large number of people are keeping an eye on the progress. NASA, for example, has enlisted the Starship to assist it in landing astronauts on the Moon as part of its Project Artemis space exploration program, which is being revitalized. It is aiming for a completion date of 2024. Apart from lunar exploration, NASA considers the Raptor engine to be critically important because, in the long run, it hopes to use the Starship spacecraft to transport astronauts to Mars. Trips to even more distant planets, such as Jupiter, are also on the horizon, which is why NASA agreed to give SpaceX a $2.9 billion grant to help fund the development of the spacecraft. The United States military is another major customer awaiting the Raptor engine because of its positive experience with SpaceX rockets during the launch of its national security satellites. The United States military, the world's most powerful military, 
plans to use the Starship for the rapid delivery of cargo and personnel to locations around the world. In conjunction with the powerful Raptor rocket engines, SpaceX is developing a revolutionary engine that produces an